Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Okay, so Babylon's gone, Persia. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. Look at that. The Babylonian name for Daniel stayed. Now, I don't know if it's recalling who he was, what he was, or the fact is, you know, the Persians came in and adopted the Babylonian gods, which are here today. A lot of these gods you can trace back to Egypt and trace back to Babylon. And what they do is, what the Romans did was, they adapted the gods, gave them new names. What the Catholic does, they go into the land, they say, okay, this is your gods, well, we're going to give them Catholic gods. Mary goes all the way back to Astarte. Easter is Istar. It's the same God with a different name. And that's a copycat of Satan because what did Jesus do? What did the Bible do with some of the men? Abram was named, renamed Abraham. Sarai was named Sarah. Sarah. Uh, Simon was renamed Peter. So let's take these gods and give them other name. Well, after all, Jesus did it. God did it. The Baptist Church does it. You're waiting for that one. And the thing was true. I mean, take another one. Well, our church, we don't do trick or treat. We do trunk or treat. Wow. How long did it take you to think of that one? But the time was anointed was long. I mean, we don't have rock and roll. We have southern gospel. And he understood the thing and the understanding of the vision. So Daniel deals with a lot of visions and prophecies. In those days, I, Daniel, okay, Daniel's right, it was morning three full weeks, 21 days. Now, the Bible does not tell us we can insinuate what he's mourning about, but we are not told. So if I were to go and say, well, Daniel's mourning because you're in captivity, I don't know. How about a, I don't know? I think that's a respectable answer. But you're not going to get that from a scholar. You're not going to get that from, a, from one of your modern preachers and pastors. You're out there, I can't say, oh, no. I don't know. I ate no pleasant bread. That's common bread. That's bread you would get in the stores of Babylon. Now, uh, Deuteronomy or Leviticus, I forget where it is. It says unliving bread is the bread of affliction. Unleavened bread is the, the, the source of Jewish people and they make one of the great Jewish bread. We had a we had a friend of ours who used to go to the Jewish bakery and bring it. He gives us a little thing of bread and you pick that thing. It was like a cement block. Oh, it was delicious. Oh, you're not supposed to eat that when you're diabetic. So what Daniel's doing is he's eating unleavened bread. He's not eating regular bread. He's not having any meat and potatoes or any kind of thing. So there are different ways of fasting. I mean, there are some people, they'll have milk. There are some people, they'll have a coffee, you know, no food. There are some people, they will eat maybe vegetables. Whatever it is. There are diabetics like me, you can't fast long. And, and you got to go to a certain period, because if you fast too long, then your sugar is going to be messed up. And it could be just as worse having no sugar than having too much sugar. And you say, well, how do I fast? I think it's a fast between you and God. There are people I've read about going weeks and two weeks and three weeks without no food. I would not tell a common person to do that. See what your limits are, but don't try to break them. Don't try to make yourself unhealthy. There are people who have gone into starvation for a cause. And they come out of their cause, they end up in a hospital, and they die. Well, that didn't do you no good. 
Neither came flesh. In the, in the Bible, flesh could be me. It could be... <coughs> it could be fish. Nor wine. Now, wine was a staple along with water, but I don't know. I mean, I've heard of water. Like Mexico. You don't want water from Mexico. You want bottled water or give you something out of a, a can or a bottle. I don't think it'd be wine as in intoxicating liquor. It, there, there's new wine. There's grape juice. Neither did I anoint myself at all. And what the Jewish people, what people did, they take olive oil, they, like we do today with perfumes and oils and antidepressants and all that all kinds of stuff. To three whole weeks, 21 days were fulfilled. So Daniel was Daniel. He didn't dress himself up. He didn't fix himself up. And he was probably moody. You haven't eaten, you can't have this kind of thing. You know, everybody around you is getting, you know. I remember the Bible says, I believe Daniel would follow because he's a man of God. You don't go on the street, hey, everybody, I'm fasting, look at me. <laughs> you don't do that. And Daniel probably carry around, no one probably knew, and don't even realize, you know, that, I don't know how, how the Bible went, but that big pork in it. You know, so, you know, so do myself for the Lord. I've done that, I've fasted like that. I, I said two, I said two more hours, I'm not going to eat. <laughs> My stomach says, you want to make a bet, buddy? I'm hungry now. Wait a minute, you're not usually hungry now. I am now. You know, once you want to do something for God, not only does the devil get upset, your flesh gets upset. When you say as a Christian, you know what? I am abstaining from sin. I'm not going to do that no more. And your flesh comes in and says, I want to do that. That Paul tells us we, we war, we entangle, we are in battle against the spirit and the flesh. That's a battlefield. If you haven't had that battlefield, you don't know what I'm talking about. You're yet carnal and in your sins. When all the world, the church, is celebrating Christmas and Easter, and your pastor comes up, well, yeah, well I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, that's just silly. That's just nonsense. You want the names of books and the page numbers and the international book number, whatever that's called? That's uh, we're going to do what we're going to do. You know, you can go home today and tell a family, Hi, I'm gay. And, oh, isn't that sweet? You go home and tell, Well, we don't do Christmas. We don't do Easter. Oh, oh what about your children? Oh, my God. They're not going to get no presents. Uh, and, and they're sheltered. And they're, oh, man. I'm, 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 <laughs> what did I do? Kick you in the butt? Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right. And the four and twentieth day, twenty-fourth day of the first month. Now that's the month. It has two names, but different time periods. That's Abed, early in Jewish history, and Nisan or Nisan, not the car. Later on in the captivity. Esther, you'll find Nisan, not the car. This is the time. It's important. You gotta know your Bible. This is the time of the Passover. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So what Daniel's doing is the Feast of Unleavened Bread is seven days from the Passover. And actually, it's so close that when you get in the New Testament, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is actually called the Passover. And they're, they're one and the same. What Daniel's done is taking the Feast of Unleavened Bread either two weeks before or two weeks after. You know what? I'm not going to have any leaven at all. More. That's important. And I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittikil. That's the Tigris River. Now, if you look on a map, you'll find the Tigris River. They used to call it the Hittikil. Well, listen. I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida right now. I guarantee... Wait, 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 back in... When the Native Americans were here, I guarantee it wasn't called Daytona Beach. I come from Connecticut. 
It was Indian country. And New London, Connecticut was not known by New London. Now there are some places in the United States where you look at the name and that was the actual name that the Indians gave it. Okay? But the street, you got a street, that's Main Street. Well, that wasn't the Indian name. They didn't have streets. And I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man who, you ready? I don't know, but we'll, we'll look at it. Clothed in linen. The Bible said, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's what we're going to wear in heaven. We're going to wear linen, white linen, whose loins were girded with the fine gold, not just gold, Fine gold of Euphaz. And there's a lot of different things about Euphaz. So, here is a gentleman, a man, with a white linen robe type clothing. In his loins, the strength of a man, there was gold. His body was also like the barrel. And the barrel find my notes here. It could be green, blue, yellow, or even a color of fire. And we're going somewhere with it. Hold on. His face has the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire. His arms and his feet like the color of polished brass, as tan as brownish. Not white, European, not black, African. And the voice of his words are like the voice of a multitude. So, we got an interesting character here. Luke chapter 9. This is what churches don't do. We're actually going to look at the scripture. And this is not going to show you, this, you know, all right, this scripture. We're going to show you. We got time. We could do a part two. You know, you can watch your movies, you can go to a movie, and it don't bother you to could be continued. Oh, okay. Just won't go to church tomorrow then. Oh, got to soak out more money for the family for tickets and popcorn and soda, but we'll be back to see the sequel. But when, when a man who's from a Bible says, okay, open up your Bible, and we're going to have to finish this next time, uh, why? Luke 9, 29. And you know what the problem with that statement I just made is? When a pastor thinks that way. We're just going to close it up. We'll hurry up, finish up. And look, we did Daniel in six weeks. It's got 12 chapters. I heard of a man who preached on a, on a, on a, from, I think it was the book of Isaiah. I think it was. And I could be totally wrong. Comment. In the comment section. But that's all he preached was on the book of Isaiah. I've heard of men who've taken a small book in the Bible months. 9.28 And it came to pass about the eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and James, uh, Peter, John, and James, and went up to a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance, his face, was altered. His raiment was white and glistening. Look at that. Look at that. Matthew. Matthew. Getting closer. Matthew's Jewish. Matthew 17. Verse 2. Verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up to a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before him. His face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. That's interesting because that matches Daniel, but let's go to Revelation. 
You notice how many times we've gone to Revelation and Daniel? And, and the Christian, oh, I love the book of Revelation. But what, what do you know about Daniel? Daniel was in the lion's den. And well, the, the three Hebrew boys in the, in the furnace. And, and what? What else is there in Daniel? Revelation 1.13. Well, yeah, what else is there in Daniel? Go back and watch all the videos. Let's see. Let me check here real quick. Daniel. Uh, this one. We are on the 31st series of 10 chapters of Daniel. What else is in Daniel? All right. Verse number 13. In the midst of the seven candlesticks was like the Son of Man, that's Jesus, clothed with a garment down to his foot. Look at no shorts. Christians, no shorts. And girded about his paps, that's the breast, with a golden girdle. Does that sound familiar? His head and his hairs were like wool, white as wool. You say, why is that? Because all the trouble this church age has been giving him. As white as snow. His eyes, ready, were as a flame of fire. His feet, like on divine brass, burned in a furnace. His voice was the sound of many waters. Daniel. Daniel 10. Daniel 10. Scripture was scripture. Oh, what's in Daniel? I don't like the Old Testament. That's okay. Verse 5. And I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded about with, with fine gold, and took opaz. His body was like the barrel, his face was like the appearance of lightning, his eyes were the lamps of fire, his arms and feet like the color of potter's brass, the voice of his words like a voice of a multitude. Daniel is looking at the pre incarnation of a certain man named Jesus. Before the manger. How come churches, oh, the birthday of Jesus, Christmas, the birthday of Jesus, we're going to have a happy birthday. How come you don't talk about the pre incarnation of Jesus? You want to know something that's really funny about the pre incarnation of Jesus? Do you know who the first person, the angel of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ in the Old Testament? Do you know who the first person that showed up? I mean, the first person that the, the angel of the Lord showed up to? Showed up to Hagar when Ishmael was in her womb. Genesis. Ready for this one? Ready? 1611. That's interesting. You have to pay for that. So Daniel sees Jesus. Before he was even born. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready? Are you sure? Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. I can say that for some Baptists today. Acts chapter 9. Verse 7. Now what happened? Paul has been knocked down to the road in Damascus by Jesus Christ. And 9-7, the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. Acts 22-9. Paul's telling the testimony of the road to Damascus. A Acts 22 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, light, and was afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. So Daniel, many Christians don't read, and I'm going to hit you on this all the time. 
You know three stories of Daniel. Whoopie do. Uh, there's a lot more. And Daniel alone saw the vision, verse 7, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, light, light, but a great quaking of fear fell upon them, Acts. So they fled to hide themselves. <laughs> Friend, you find the Old Testament, you find in the New Testament, and New Testament you find in the Old Testament. And you got to wonder, because Saul, before he became Paul, he was mighty in the scriptures. You can imagine when Paul's down there and like, you know, this sounds familiar. I don't know if it was a deja vu moment, but there's something really, here's Jesus talking to me. They didn't see anything. And imagine Dan, open up the Daniel scroll like, whoa. So now what do you do? You put Daniel and Paul side by side. They both prophesy. They're, they both have revelations of God. They both seen Jesus. It's more than the lions then. And th th there's there's a children's hymn and all that. Dare to be a Daniel. Uh, let me tell you, Daniel is just no common hymn to sing about. You want to be like Daniel, you gotta you gotta outskirt yourself. This man has survived how many kings? And he still kept his job. The people have gone against him. They tried to have him killed. They tried to dethrone his office. They tried to get him. They tried to nail him. They tried to change his Jewishness. They tried to, to, to deform him. Well, Nebuchadnezzar's gone. I think he got right. Belsizer's gone. Here's Cyrus. Cyrus is going to be coming up. And we're in a book that's not likely to be read by Christians. Therefore I was left alone. So it sounds like in Acts 29, or tell me 22, that's what happened with Paul. I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. Sound like Paul? For my commonness, my who I am, was turned in me into corruption. Now that corruption is the description of what happens to a dead body. Martha said, Jesus, he's been in there for th three or four days, forget. He's stinking. The Bible says that Jesus, before corruption happened in that body, he arose three days and three nights. Daniel's like, you know what? You know what happened to me? I came to the next thing to death. Maybe he died. Why? Now this is where they don't believe Jonah and the sea monster and the whale and the fishing and whatever nonsense they have. Jonah died and went into hell. Because Jesus said as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, not the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the, in the heart of the earth. In hell. Jonah and Jesus went to hell. I'm not going to say Daniel went to hell. But watch what happened. Corruption is one of the things in the Bible. One of the things in the Bible. That what happens to a body after death. I retain no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words. The words of that man. That certain man. Jesus. 
And when I heard the voice of his word, watch this. They got run over to Thessalonians. I think it's First Thessalonians one four. I mean chapter First Thessalonians chapter four. I believe it is the rapture. I always forget what chapter that's in. I was in a deep sleep. You know, you know what the Bible describes one of the things of death is? Sleep. That's what Paul said it was. Who said it was? Paul? Have we talked about Paul? If Paul said death and sleep and sleep and death, and Daniel comes up after having the quote, 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 road to Damascus experience with Jesus. You got that, right? Now, I'm going to stick my neck out. But you can throw in the garbage what I'm saying because I am not sure of this. Okay? See? That's one of the things. If it's short, I'll say sign it, seal it, Stiley, William, Hayward, D.D., dumb dog. But if I'm not sure, I'm sticking my neck out, I will tell you, you can throw it in the garbage can. Okay? Now, don't go out and say, it's not only authority ties said that Daniel died. Don't you dare say that. You say that Stiley said, it's a possibility. Not a surety. But let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. We're not going to... Okay, Ready? People don't believe that Jonah died, right? And came alive. Resurrection. There's some people who say that Jesus didn't die. That the resurrection is when you put the body on, on the stone, the coldness of the stone revived the, the conscience Jesus. Some people don't believe that Paul died when he was stoned. Now we got a case here where Daniel... Possibility dies. Isn't that quinky dinky? So you can throw in the garbage can, but I was in deep sleep on my face. My face toward the ground. I would assume maybe that was the same posture that Paul was in. And behold. A hand touched me, which set me upon my knee. Now, if Daniel died in verse 9, verse 10 is the resurrection. I'm not going to sign, seal, and deliver that. I'm going by that deep sleep. We'll run one more place, Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 2. Genesis 10. This is a case where people don't believe, and some believe. I believe Genesis 2 1, what I'm going to say as a doctrinal fact. How do you know that? Well, when I went into the hospital and had three toes, toes in a part of my foot, and another part of my foot amputated, I was put to sleep. And the aggravation of the thing was is when they woke me up, like, oh, come on, I can sleep longer. That was good. All right, sleep. And they will tell you, Mr. Hayward, one, one hospital I remember, they put a mask, Mr. Hayward, just deep breathe, and then you'll be sleepy. You're going to fall asleep. Don't fight it. You're going to fall asleep. Okay. Thank you. And can you put me under a couple more hours after Mr. Hayward? That's, that's one of the surgeries I had to happen. They said, you're going to sleep. Watch this. Ready? Watch the word. What did I say last night? Don't change the word. Don't change the words. You got a modern Bible. You stick up for a modern Bible. This is where you're going to go wrong. And the Lord God. Now that was Jesus, right? Okay, that was Jesus. Caused a sleep to fall upon Adam. No, 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 no. He caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. 
and it produces the woman. Adam's the type of Christ. Christ died for his bride, the woman. Adam died for his bride, Eve. I'm going to tell you, it's not doctrine. I'm going to tell you, I believe Daniel died and Jesus Christ resurrected him. But Daniel's not a Christian. Because Daniel's going to live on, he's going to get old, and he's going to die again. You know what happened to all the resurrection stories in the Bible except Jesus Christ? They died. They came alive. Lazarus died. That widow woman's son of Nana, he died. The, the, the resurrections of the children of Elijah or Elijah, they died. Lazarus died. You know what happens to the Christian? We get resurrection. We don't ever die. I have a book of Daniel. Go to a hundred Baptist churches and ask them about the book of Daniel and see what they learn. See what kind of answers you're going to get.